Okay. I would ask you some details. Let me write it. How can I have a business email ID? Well, okay. Info at qualitythought.com on the way like a single remark. Huh? My license is out there. Okay. Let me do one thing. Let me open tower in uh, uh, AWS. Okay. Even then, I need license, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So ours is US West too, right? EMI ID में क्लिक चेस थे, it will take you to AWS. Okay. It needs minimum 2 GB of RAM. So that's why I'm taking T2 medium. Okay, even if it is more than 2 GB, I'm, I'm trying to take a 4 GB machine. Yeah. And rest of the details, I'm not worried about uh, too much. I would call it as tower. Next. Yeah. What I would do is I'd put all traffic. Launch, and I would be using the Okay. Ansible Tower EC2. Okay. Fine, let this machine be up. Let us continue further. So, connect. So, downloads. Okay, what it says? Root or each other. Did he give any documentation for this? No. Root one connect to one turn. Let me see if I can find any documentation in this. Ansible Tower User Guide. Man, I don't want all of this. I want only how to connect to the EC2 machine. I info at qualitythought.com I can't even confirm it. Qualitythought.in. It's not the ground. Okay, let us do one thing. What is this machine's public IP address? Public DNS is this, right? Uh, 
ഓക്കെ പ്ലീസ് സൈൻ ഇൻ വണ്ടർഫുൾ ഇനീഷ്യൽ വേജ് അവട്ടില്ല തന്നെ തറവാത്ത ഏഞ്ച് ചെയ്യാ ചെത്തുന്നത് ജസ്റ്റ് എ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഗൈസ് ഐ തിങ്ക് പ്രീവിയസ്ലി ഈസ് ടു ആക്സെപ്റ്റ് ദ no previously used to accept the live dot it now i think they have they are intelligent now okay okay default ansible tower login admin and password yes if this works we are good uh, pardon me meedunda okay okka nimisham idu work avalandi we documentation ichine cheyatnam manu i think they have modified something so admin and password okay so let me download it it is not going to work out uh, so ansible tower download free trial yeah mere id cheppandi no audio am i not audible guys to the people on the web kiran kumar dot ha ha കമ്പനി ആ ഫോൺ നമ്പർ ചെപ്പണ്ട് മഞ്ച് പബ്ലിസിറ്റി ആദ്യം മിക്ക് 9985 ഓക്കേ 77 47 ഓക്കേ യു വുഡ് ഗെറ്റ് എ മെയിൽ ഓക്കേ okay you would get an email which which would uh, basically have a link to uh, download and setup this is a problem with enterprise uh, kind of installations yeah vachinda yeah aa mail ok panjandi qtdevops@gmail.com forward chesandi login login ayya unnatunnaru kada Hmm. so i'd kill this machine terminate and in this place let me launch another machine yeah class time please pamichara ഓക്കെ ആൻസിബിൾ ടവർ ഡൗൺലോഡ് യാ ഫൈൻ 
you would also get one more license uh, question okay one more mail from man dagara already unda half one ante dan artham adega okay anyway we need license right so fine so what i would do is i'd create one more machine okay i can take centos red hat it will not work guys red hat they require some uh, licenses and all of that okay so as usual 14 most stable and free operating system yeah so i am taking the 4 gb ram tower next put all traffic launch okay fine so let us wait for this machine to be up and once this machine is up we need to do two, two things now one is uh, we need to upload the our uh, tar file which we have downloaded in our machine to the aws machine okay can we do it through vagrant absolutely yeah you can do it through vagrant also yeah but 4 gb ram on a vagrant on this machine uh, does will not work out so that's why i'm taking ec2 machine okay exactly the same setup you can try it on vagrant take ubuntu trusty 64 and try to do the same thing whatever i'm trying to do okay connect so let me connect to this machine first okay we are in fine and now i need to upload uh, basically my tower so i'll be using why do i need to type all of this again so scp minus i chef dot pam and now here what is that i want to basically uh, upload i want to upload right so source is ansible hyphen tower yeah ansible dot prem okay so let me copy the same command again and then so i'd be using scp command scp minus i ansible dot pem and then ansible hyphen tower setup okay so this is one is what we have downloaded right now and this i want to create in home sorry home ubuntu ansible tower hyphen setup hyphen latest dot tar dot gz i'm just uploading the file if you don't like all of this you can use winner cp where you can do the things visually also okay it is that now i would log in into that machine ls okay first i need to untar it so 
Bentar. Oke. Okay. That's fine, but it should still do, right? My face missing. Okay. So I have I am in Ansible Tower Setup. Okay. LS. Okay, you are seeing setup dot sh, right? Okay. Sudo Okay. That's it. Just run that sudo dot slash and it would try to install everything in whatever it takes in Ansible. Okay. So that's exactly the same thing whatever they might have written. Okay. Installing Ansible. Tower, yeah. yeah. Operating system doesn't matter. Whenever you have downloaded the install, it would it would basically look the same. Okay. Okay. So requirements. Where are the guides? Oh. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so that's it. For us, we don't need to worry about all of this. Just, just basically run the setup dot sh, which does everything. Okay. And after that, you have to basically, if you want, you can uh, change the password from the command line, and the default will be admin, and password is uh, will be will be given to you. Okay. So now, what, man? What is happening? And that's fine, but it should not give the error. So let me try with root account. So CD home. This is the most easiest installation in that thing. These guys are unnecessarily complicating it. The number in the word that is chala easy guy, but What is happening? Configure passwords in the inventory file. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, my bad guys. Yeah, yeah. For all of this nonsense, I think I have forgot one important thing. Okay. So in LS, there will be certain files where you need to basically run or change the passwords. Okay. So, VI, inventory, and you are seeing admin password over here, right? So this, these are the places where you need to change passwords. First, you need to do this and then write the setup. Okay. So let me put it as Ansible Tower. This will be my password. Okay. For almost everything. Okay. So my password uh, for everything, whatever is possible, is Ansible Tower. Okay.
it takes time it takes time to work on so one thing which i have which i have uh, absolutely done a blender is without changing the inventory file and entering the passwords i have run setup.sh so it was trying to tell that you don't have passwords please enter them okay first enter the passwords and then run setup.sh yeah my bad my mistake there yeah. if you see ansible tower is also set up using ansible itself right Okay, so speak with uh, Satish Karthik. I think he would help you out. There are reachability failures. Actually, you need to run this command as a sudo user, not as a root user. That's okay. Okay. So when I started, I done with sudo and, and all of that. That's the right way to do the setup, but it's okay. Some basically what happens is some of the access might not happen on a normal user. But we are okay with that. So. So you take any configuration management system. There will be a message queue called as RabbitMQ. And uh, there will be a, always be, will be a database which is uh, Postgres. Chef also has a similar setup. In Chef, you would have a message queue, okay? But there, I think it is active MQ. You would have a message queue, and then uh, you would have a database which is Postgres. Same thing in Puppet, because these are all free versions of uh, the message queues, right? Okay, the rot retry will come whenever your playbook has failed. Okay, whenever your playbook has failed, you would, it would basically create a, uh, a file called as retry to to just tell you what what uh, what was the point which it has failed, and you can continue your insta your uh, stuff from using retry file rather than uh, playbook.yml file to continue from there. So that's the reason why it would generate retry file. Even AWS was working earlier, but I'm not sure why it is not working now. It's okay. It takes time, it's approximately 15 to 20 minutes it takes to install this. And after that, you have to play only on UI. So that's, that's why. And try to run this from a non-root user. I have done it from a root user. I, I can't revert it right now. So that's the reason I'm continuing. But you try to run, like, change the password file in the inventory. And then sudo 
dot slash setup dot sh. That's more than enough. Yeah. Then you would not get even the verification failures which I got. So the verification failures which I got something in red was uh, other users will not be able to uh, change anything because this is created with a root account and all of that. Yeah. So do it from a sudo account is a safer thing to do. And then by default, uh, your uh, default login in uh, AWS accounts will have sudo privileges. You have to just add sudo to it. And this configured with no password, so it will not ask you password also. So that's how they add they add your user to the sudoers group. And in case of Red Hat, they add it to the wheel group if I'm not wrong. Yeah. How happen we use uh, Ansible Tower in uh, real time and for what purpose? But see, Ansible Tower we use it whenever we want to further simplify the complication of uh, having inventory files and doing everything from command line. If you want some UI based tool which gives you a report of everything, so that these are the towers that are available and it, it would basically it is it would be easy for you to do the work of what you are trying to do. So generally, when will we do that? We will be do using Ansible uh, Tower when we have large number of servers to maintain. Okay, and the other thing is when when uh, basically your organization wants reports of the activities which are being done, which is not possible in Ansible. So whenever you are gener generating something in Ansible, the only thing which you get is log file, right? The logs of what has happened. But if you want all of them in a visual format, then it would not be possible. For that reason, we'll be going with uh, the Ansible Tower, and it is an enterprise version, and it re it requires a licensing cost. Can we create a playbook using Tower? Yeah, you can, but you would be writing the same thing. So basically what we do in the tower is you write the playbooks and you would be integrating them using your git repositories. You would tell where your tower is or where your playbooks are. That's that's how you configure in tower. By the way, in Ansible, it is not required to really have this tower. They have given enabled all the features for open source also. So, for example, in Chef, uh, you cannot add more than uh, um, 10 nodes whenever you install the tower. So, that's why people go to Chef Enterprise. And similarly, in Puppet, you can't add similarly 10 nodes. Okay, When it is managed or hosted uh, basically by Chef itself, they will have a restriction of 5 nodes. You cannot go beyond 5 nodes. But in Ansible, there is no restriction. You can manage everything with open source itself. So why do you want to go to the tower is other question which, which many people have. So it is not required. But as I said, if your reporting is very much important to you and if you want your admins to do it easily just by clicking on the UI, by adding all of that, then you would be going with this tower. Otherwise, there is no need for this tower. There are some enterprise features like okay, you can uh, you can remember the state of what has happened because there is a database server now. It it maintains all of the audit information which is not possible or which is not uh, there in the Ansible control server. Ansible control server is not a service also, right? Whenever we execute, it will try to execute. Ansible playbook is is an executable. It is not a service. So like Apache, which keeps on running on your machine, or like Tomcat. It, whenever you type something called as Ansible hyphen playbook, it is an executable. It executes and it comes back. So, if you want a connected approach, we want everything, history of everything, auditing and all of that. Then, then this makes more of sense. Okay. Okay, it says that setup process has been completed. Com uh, completed. So let us go to the EC2 machine. Okay, and take this IP address and basically go over here. Yeah, it would be hosting the stuff on uh, port 80. Basically, it is an application that runs on an Nginx web server. Okay. Come on, admin. Okay, so he has given one more note to us, right? If that is not working, what is that we can do? 
where where is that yeah tower manager had seen some command yeah so once installed if you uh, log in into tower instance by ssh the default uh, admin password will be given okay so basically what is trying to tell is once installed if you log in into tower instance via ssh the default admin password will be provided in the prompt you can change them by using the following command okay so let us do that first are we exiting out yeah and let me log in okay sudo hyphen minus i if you do it from the normal user you would get all of this privilege so let us go with this command tower manage change password one minute admin yeah we have given the ansible tower in the configuration right i'm just entering with that okay so you would get another mail uh, so i have to basically select that license guys i i have a uh, just give me five minutes of uh, time and there is a vehicle delivery that has came sorry for the disturbance but i'd be i'd be just joining back yeah How many nodes in control server? No limit. There is no limit to it.
మెయిల్ పంపించారా ఓకే రిక్వెస్ట్ ఏంటి మనకి దీంట్లో వస్తుందిగా ఇందాక ఏమి ఇచ్చాం పేర్లు సారీ గై సారీ ఫర్ దట్ క్వాలిటీ డాట్ కంపెనీస్ యూటీ ఒకసారి మెయిల్ ఐడి చెప్పండి ఫోన్ you would get a license now and and uh, we need to set that license up over here you have to wait till you receive mail hectic process right nothing as such running as setup.ssh is the only installation but for rest of the things which are uh, basic ansible related formalities we have to wait for some time till the moment we don't get license we can't do anything what's there it takes it takes some time license key otasu as an attachment you would get a license key yeah that forward it to me పంపించారా స్పామ్ లోకి వెళ్ళదు యా ఐ వాట్ ఇట్ యా ఫైన్ so this text file whatever you receive you download it and then you see the browse open that file and submit okay so setting up requires all the other formalities so yeah fine so now you are seeing already a host entry which is the same ansible uh, tower where we have installed okay and then uh, it has something called as inventories okay and then there is something called as demo inventory and i'm quite sure that everyone knows what an inventory is now all right so inventory and then you are seeing an aml format and a json format where you can write your entries over here if you want to write any variables okay so what are the instance groups and all of that stuff so let me not get into this and then you are seeing hosts so in the host there is only one host which is local host right fine i'd go to the inventories and then there is something called as add inventory and add smart inventory so let me add inventory okay name is 
test okay and description is test organization is default and uh, are there any inside credentials and groups okay what are the variables which you have in this okay so i don't have any variables at the inventory level as of now okay this is the same thing we, we would be doing the same inventory file in the ui okay inventory lo var files untai kada inventory lo vars rastam kada that you would be writing it over here so let me put it as save okay and then get into the host add host okay then you, it is asking for the host name and we know what this host name is all about okay so i think uh, so let me add one machine uh, what are the other machines which are running node 3 okay you can give by host name host ip address whatever makes sense to you okay and give host name okay and then save it so this is my host file okay once it is host you can run some commands also run commands choose a module what is the module which you want to run i want to execute a module called as there is ping okay and then there is something called as credential machine credential okay so we would use become right do you remember that we used to use become here you would be using enable uh, privilege pseudo privilege escalation so let me get into test okay let me get into permissions okay this is a user user is admin and then he has a system administrator and then get into settings and then you are seeing credentials right okay go and add a credential okay name is ansible okay and the description is test i don't want to select an organization is there any organization let me go with default organization itself okay and select a credential type what are the types which i have okay uh, so is it google compute no is it source control no is it vault no so let me take the basic credential where is the basic credential machine okay whenever you say credential machine it would have username and password but if you are using ansible you have to give pem uh, you have to give ec2 you have to give pem files over here even that works okay ansible okay so privilege escalation method you can use sudo or you can just leave it for that to take addition okay so let me put it as sudo privilege escalation username ansible okay privilege escalation password ansible okay do you want to prompt it on launch you can say as yes but if you if that is not the case you can go with all of that so let me go to the inventories test inventory <coughs> host this stuff okay and then uh, the moment you select it you see something called as run command and let me choose a module which is ping i don't have any arguments what is my machine credential just click on this button it would show you whatever it is we have ansible okay verbosity what is the verbosity level which you want i would okay do you want forks so forks i'll be discussing what that is so for now let us not do this okay and let me do launch okay if you have enabled triple v you might be understanding what this is doing this is a whole lot of logs okay what you can any escalate the same see ping and pong okay it is success so this is what we get normally right whatever you see in green is not what we get but if you see from tower also i am able to do the same thing okay so basically you can execute the command and uh, if you want to do a basic restart of the system you can write a basic command and then restart the machine and you can do all of that okay but yes 
not of our interest. So let me go into the projects. Let me add a project called as test. And then here you would choose your Git project. And then this Git project basically contains your URL where you have all of the details written about your site.yml file. Okay? So you would be writing on that. So let me, I'll not be creating this. Okay. So this is all about playing with UI and you can I am quite sure that you can play with this UI. Okay. What I'm interested in is let me go to the projects and let me click on this dummy project. Okay. If you see here, he has given the credentials of Ansible Tower samples. Okay. So basically he's telling that whenever you want to run this project, you can uh, basically execute the jobs and all of that stuff. So and go to the jobs and we have created one job which was ping. Okay. And generally you are seeing schedules over here, right? Okay. So you can go to the schedule. Okay. Edit these schedules or add the schedules. Basically what these schedules are whenever you want something to be happening repetitively. Okay. So the moment you add projects, you would be able to use that project to create basically the jobs executing out of it. We have done the manual job execution. Okay. Which with run commands. All right. So inventories, test inventory, and there is something called as sources. Okay. And what is this sources? Add source. Okay. So basically this this tells what where is that you want to run this project. And based out of that you have to execute the credentials. Okay. And these are completed jobs. What are the jobs that are that have been completed? Okay. The most important thing out of all of this is not any of this, but in the jobs, you would have an action of all of this. And then you can relaunch the jobs which you have done. Okay. You can view the job. You would have all the history of whatever has been done because it maintains everything in the Postgres database. So there is no need for you to go into the where logs section, which will be basically deleted. Or if the log related is there on your machine, you would be losing some of the logs. Here there is a no chance that you would be missing out anything. And also apart from this, okay. So this will configure what are the different job templates which you have. So let me get into the demo job template. Okay. Fine. This is a place where you would uh, configure. Okay, templates is a place where you would configure uh, your stuff. So, for example, you have written a playbook and you want to basically call that playbook. Okay, you are seeing add job template and give test. Okay, some description. What is the job type which you want to do? Do you want to run or check? Check we have uh, looked into right. Check is just basically it will not update anything, but it would just tell you whether it works or not. So I'd be going doing run. And what is your inventory? My inventory is test. Okay. What is the project? So if you have created your project, you can basically access that. But let me select demo project itself. Choose a playbook. So from this project, it is not possible for you to choose a playbook. But if you have configured your project correctly, you would see all the site.yml files over there and you would be seeing a YML list over here. Okay. And then what is the credentials which you want to launch? So we have created a credential called as Ansible, right? Doing that. Okay, and then forks. I said that I'd be discussing about this forks later, so it's okay. And what is the verbosity which you want to launch? And then basically give tags if you want. Okay, and basically say when you select all of this, save this. And once you have this template, you can run this templates as many times as you want. So Ansible hyphen playbook, and we give all of those parameters, right? That we set up in something called as templates. Okay, but for that, this works. Only when your project is in a version control system that is accessible from this machine. Remember that. Sources low git low undale. In our machine lo local uh, file system low undan konde. It is a bit difficult. So Ansible Tower expects the things to be in a version control system. Okay. You can configure even if it is in a folder system, but it's quite tricky. Okay. But whereas in Ansible uh, normal control server, which is open source, you would not have all of these dependencies, right? And then you can go at any moment, go to the jobs. And basically, see what has happened on all of that. So, I'm not getting into doc. We can get into this documentation and see all of the stuffs. Okay. And then you are seeing all of the details about this machine over here. And then click on admin, and you can create other users also if you want. 
so for example uh, for the for the project if you want multiple people over here you can add your uh, team also okay so generally you would have uh, it the licensing is based out of number of nodes which you have so it, the licensing licensing cost varies based out of number of nodes for example i am managing, managing 100 nodes and you are managing 200 your license cost and my license cost will vary it is not the same for n number of machines it, it, it the license is given basically based out of number of machines which you want to connect okay so not very fancy when you compare this with uh, the chef server or a puppet server because puppet server and chef server the hosted chef will give you more details with respect to this but yeah this is a bit better alternative because uh, from there you can't run anything over there but here you can run anything that's one advantage which you would get okay so you can configure notifications okay you can configure notifications directly from here and you can give basically what are what are the templates which you want to give and what is the type of communication which you want to for example to set up emails whenever some job runs it is simple okay if it is an ansible normal stuff you have to write one more module which sends a mail on a ansible control server does not come up with notifications but this comes up with notifications and let us go one level back okay and here you can have credentials you can main manage teams per team you can maintain projects okay and then there will be some management jobs when i say management jobs these are administrative tasks uh, installing patches on your systems okay or uh, restarting the machines okay restarting the services increasing uh, some uh, swap memories and all of that that would put in manage management groups okay the only thing which you would get out of this is you would be able to see all of the jobs visually what is happening and you would be able to recollect any job that has run in the historical run historical fine so just play around with this ui not many are using ansible tower but at least you should know what is it for example we would have template template is nothing but the ansible hyphen playbook command okay and then there will be something called as run command okay run command is nothing but ad hoc command ansible and we give that command right you would be entering that but you would be entering it in ui okay we would have inventory inventory is the same inventory over here but here you would write inventory and you would basically tell the variable definitions apart from that nothing changes apart you need to just get comfortable with this ui and so the indlo manage cheyatam pedda ansible tho baga different to em undadu it's it's the same thing okay fine so the last thing which i want to discuss in ansible okay so this is this is the last thing uh, basically let me not worry about tower anymore okay so i'll be getting into control machine okay and let me exit out of this okay okay so let me get into any task ansible i'm i'm executing the ad hoc command itself okay ansible minus m ping all so there are four machines over here all right so by default what happens is ansible has a predefined set of parallelism okay whenever you execute any command by default ansible is configured to send or to do five tasks parallelly but if you have 200 nodes doing five tasks means execution takes time right yeah so parallelism by default is five but if you want to change parallelism what you can do is do this okay and add something called as minus f and give Oh, one minute. This is called as forks. Forks in Ansible. I think I'm missing with the command line, but yeah, it's okay. Minus FA. What, what is the mistake which I have done? Did I execute my command between M and uh, yeah? Minus M is for module, right? Module cannot be minus F. So that's let us see it, see now. So if you see, it is done on one machine. 
on the next machine again and then it does the third machine and then it does the fourth machine now the parallelism is one so it does one at a time so it is not doing uh, multiple things at the same time okay so now let me set the parallelism level to 100 do i have 100 machines no it will only go till max level so since i have four machines it would take four in parallel okay but if you have 100 it would do all the 100 things parallelly on your machine so for that your machine should be really scalable for example in that cases if you want to do 100 tasks in parallel okay that means that 100 python uh, running on different threads for this you really require a decent machine mana innalu chesindaniki decent machine lekapoyina paraledu endukante maximum amount of parallelism by default in during all of these days was 5 okay but if you want to change you can use something called as minus f and minus f are basically forks fork is for number of parallel executions what you can do so for example we have seen this right this is evident right i don't use this okay and i do this see the output okay and i use this now see the output one after the other it goes one after the other because my level of parallelism was one that means that it can do only one task at a time so here the things are happening sequentially okay but if you don't use minus f till 5 it is parallel so that's why they would happen whenever they get results whenever they get results they would it would try to show you okay so if you are working on many number of nodes you would be using this minus f and it would have a decent value based out of your system for example i me having 1 gb of ram and executing this on 1000 nodes is not going to happen remember that so you the max level which you can think is maximum till 10 possibly 10 nodes lo parallel ga pump chesthe endukante 10 ssh request and it has to do 10 executions after compiling the python after converting your yml into python it has to send to 10 machines parallel and it has to wait for the 10 machines to reply on the ssh port so it requires some amount of decent amount of memory for that okay so that's the reason why i would recommend if 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 there is any um, an amount of parallelism which you want to do it has to be a decent machine okay don't take any machine and try expect that it would work with if even if i give 100 it would work yes it would try to but it might fail by saying that our memory is not available heap memory or the commit memory is not enough so you, you might get these kind of strange issues okay so what is the default number of parallelism level that is being set automatically five if you want to change it where do you think can can we change it all of the ansible configurations are current i ansible dot cfg go through that ansible dot cfg and then you would be seeing uh, the fork level and you can change that fork level by default to any any number of value but if that is not the case and if you want to change it only for one command you can use minus f okay and one more thing so in red hat enterprise uh, in uh, linux 7 people are coming up with the dots and uh, actually i'd asked even uh, basket to look into it the basic issue over there is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, if you want to install Ansible, you need to have extra channel subscription. If that is not the case, you have to go with Python installation and then pip installation. But the problem with that is whenever you install using Python and pip, you would not be getting etc, Ansible and that folder, whatever you are seeing over there. So it becomes your responsibility to create that folder. The moment you create that folder, everything will work. And if Python pip and Red Hat 7 install, you would not be having let me do ls okay at c ansible you will not have this folder so it becomes your responsibility to basically uh, copy all of this or or whatever means it is okay so it is it becomes your responsibility to create this so whenever you are installing using pip please ensure that you copy these files okay have a copy of it and if you don't have a copy of it you can go to github.com where you would see the ansible's code and all of these files are present over there so copy from there even even that is the possibility whenever you are working on red hat enterprise linux 7 without channel subscription then you have to go with first install python pip and then pip install ansible but whenever you install ansible via pip you will not be getting this folder okay you will be just getting the ansible's executable so it becomes your responsibility to write all of these files Okay, and there is another way called as uh, building Python, uh, Ansible from code. Okay, Ansible install it and basically there are three ways. One is using packages. We have done uh, sudo add apt repository ppa Ansible and all of that, right? So that is a better way. And uh, if that is not possible, then we would be going with pip. And the third one is 
take the open source code of git and then compile it but the problem with that is you would always get the latest version which might be unstable git nundi iskunnappudu ad eppudu meeku latest version isthundi ante yesterday night what developers of ansible were working that would be in there so it might not be stable so please don't build from source it is not our job we want stable versions so whenever you want stable versions there are two ways one is pip install ansible the other one is do via apt get okay or yum okay yum in red hat 7 is possible but the problem is you need to have subscription okay because earlier or one month back all of this was being in an apple repositories but now ansible is removed from apple repositories they have added it to a premium package or premium repository where you, for that you need to have some subscription that means licensing cost so andukine red hat 7 lo avadu if you want to do it on red hat 6 it is possible it is free you have to just enable the apple repository and you can install yum install ansible and it would start working so that's how it works fine so how is ansible a good bad ugly kashtanga unda ansible kashtanga unda okay so if have, if anyone is feeling that ansible is difficult wait for chef from tuesday okay in chef you would be you would uh, especially i am not saying chef is difficult it is different we would be speaking about altogether a different approach of configuration management which is what what is this model this is pull model right ansible is na gurtundadu meer enduku marchipothar ani naaku ardham avadu ansible is push model right yeah chef is pull model so there will be different dimensions towards it so we would be installing agents on the nodes okay we would work it in a different way and then there would be something called as configuration configuration drift new terminologies add up over there okay but at its core our job is the same now what is that you are trying to do you are trying to take the linux steps and you are trying to identify modules and writing yml files right there you would be writing something called as cookbooks ikkada playbooks rasna there you would be writing something called as cookbooks okay here you have modules there you would have what pardon me resources yes you would have chef resources ikkada modules na ikkada resources antam right here you have ansible tower there we call it as chef server or hosted chef server so things even if you go to the puppet it would have similar terminology puppet will have modules okay puppet will have puppet server which is called as puppet master okay and all the clients are basically called as puppet nodes so any configuration management tool okay even something which we are not going to discuss in our class like salt cf engine they also will have a similar terminology okay peerlu vere ga pilavochu nen control server in ansible antnanu or control machine antnanu but the same thing is called differently in other configuration management system that that is the essence which you need to understand okay so in any tool it is the basic is the manual execution steps which you should be aware of and then converting that into whatever scripting which it has asked in ansible has asked us to write yml files so we have looked at how to write playbook.yml files and the next level was to write the modular codes for that we have looked into roles in the morning right roles was much easy your playbook will not contain anything apart from hosts become and then roles role names done and all of the jobs will be done in the roles and whenever you want to download anything in ansible we go to ansible galaxy in chef you go to chef supermarket okay in puppet i think puppet forge okay in puppet we call it as puppet forge okay the place where you go for external libraries so every configuration management is the same at its core but the way they operate are slightly different okay if you want to just work on any other configuration management tool you have to take these principles and work on it somewhat differently that's it okay fine so what is the most used uh, ansible is a configuration management tool ansible or chef it is chef okay but ansible is growing okay it is it is like a proven technology chef ansible is growing and it is growing great because of the red hat brand okay ansible is growing great because of two things one is red hat brand first is red hat brand undoubtedly first is red hat brand and the next comes the simplicity of it you don't need programming language you can write simple yml files and then work on it that's that's the other strength of uh, uh, ansible okay fine so 
Any other doubts before I wind it up? So what tomorrow's exercise was is basically installing OpenMRS using Ansible playbook and then Ansible role, right? And tomorrow let us all install Ansible in, in our uh, lab practice session. Can we interact Ansible with uh, UCD? Can you, can you expand? I'm, I'm not sure what UCD is. Can you abbreviate what is UCD? Urban deployment. I, I don't know about urban deployment to be very frank with you. This is the first time I came across it. But you can call Ansible from any continuous integration or continuous deployment tool. The whole point is any CI or CD tools will basically have a command line way of calling it. And Ansible, to call Ansible, what is that we have to write? Ansible hyphen playbook and then the other stuff from the external tool. So it would work. Okay. So yeah, it would work. If it is capable of calling shell files, it should be able to call. It should be able to call uh, Ansible also. But you need to install Ansible in the machine where you have UCD. Yeah. We had left one topic in the morning. What is that? Debugging Japan, sir. Ah, dependencies. Okay. Not like dependencies. It is dependencies. Yeah. Okay. I'm growing old, guys. I, I forget the things. So, yeah. so, Ansible, dependencies, in roles. Um, okay. So, this is what you need to write. Okay. In your files, in meta files of your roles, you have to write role, name of the role. Name of the role is the thing which you have copied from Ansible Galaxy. And then probably if it is from any other thing, for example, what are the other things which need it needs to bring in, you would be filling that. Otherwise, you would be just writing the name. Okay. If you write the name, it would by default try to connect to Ansible Galaxy and try to search for the name. For example, if it is not the case. Okay, if it is if it is not the case, then probably you need to give your HTTP port settings also. Okay, so just expand on this dependencies. Okay, so the advantage of adding something in dependency rather than directly in site.yml is site. If whenever you write directly in site.yml, it expects that this install this dependency is downloaded and it is present on the control server. But if you write it over here, the same thing happens. But the only difference is here it would try to download it, but it would not try to run it. Remember that. It would try to download it, saying that this is a dependency, so it has to be present on that machine. So it would download it. Okay. So let us go into Ansible samples. Ansible samples. Where is GitHub? GitHub.com. Yes. Ansible examples. This is the best place, guys. For example, if you want to understand roles and all of that, this repository is more than uh, enough for you to try all the different combinations, weird combinations also. WordPress Nginx, RHEL7, roles. Okay. So let me get into the common. I don't have meta over here, so not interested. MariaDB, no meta. Nginx, no. I think these guys are writing everything on their own. They are not using any galaxies. Okay. WordPress. No. Okay. Let me try some other sample. Lamp and HA proxy. So, how many of you don't know what HA proxy is? And under HA proxy, they'll say it is a load balancer. It is much like uh, your. Uh, for the people in AWS, it is much like your elastic load balancer, but it is a static one. HA proxy is a load balancer. Whenever you have multiple uh, uh, web servers, right? Man, web servers have one websites on Okay. In, for example, you have Facebook on that. You would not write Facebook one, Facebook two, Facebook three, right? Like that, right? So you would have HA proxy, 
and your users will be speaking to HA proxy and HA proxy will redirect the traffic to one of your web server which is free. So it is a load balancer. Fine. Okay. No man, I am not seeing any anywhere. I think these guys have not used it. So, I'll do one thing, I'll publish one sample in, in Ansible uh, stuff itself. Ansible, uh, Galaxy, I don't want intro and all of that, we know all of this, okay, using Ansible Galaxy, yeah, wonderful. This is a person where we use most of the logs from, most of the stuff which we write. Okay. No man. He is also pointing out to the place where you need to install them. Now that I'll do one thing. I'll, I'll try to write a sample. Just use that. Okay, I'll I'll be uploading that sample on Monday, not tomorrow. I'll be uploading that sample. The only thing is. I'd be using the same Tomcat, but I would be taking the Java dependency from Gearling guy, and where you can uninstall the stuff and just run it, it would try to download it. I'd add the dependency and then do it. Okay. You have to just add it in the dependency sections of your uh, meta and then role, and then use the same role in the site.yml file also. For the people who basically want to understand what has to be done over there, what you can do is you try it out, and I'd be basically publishing one in Ansible zone. Okay. In our classroom roles, we have written everything in site.yml, right? Okay, now you get into the roles, okay? You get into one of these roles, for example, Apache, okay? And then there is Meta. In, in Meta, there is main.yml, right? Not here. Dependencies, right? In this dependencies, you have to write the dependencies like each and every dependency, okay? For example, I have a dependency, which is basically name is gearlinguy.java, okay? And possibly the version, what is the version which you want to get into, that's it, okay? Here, if you add it, what happens? It would try to download also. Okay. Whenever you run that command, it would it would just see whether it is available or not. If it is not available, it would download. But if you put it in the host, it is your responsibility. You have to download. But in enterprise, you would download it prior. You would not write it over here. If it is from if it is from uh, basically Ansible Galaxy, because here the people can change the version. If you download it locally by using Ansible Galaxy install command, then uh, you can basically have your own. Uh, Stuff. And and one thing in Ansible Galaxy install is there is one thing called as minus p there. Ansible Galaxy install and you are writing the name right. That's what I have shown. Okay. And then if you want that to be installed not in the default folder which is at your uh, home directory dot Ansible and then in dot Ansible roles, then what you can do is you can use minus p. Okay. If you don't want to use this path at all, go into the ansible.cfg file and there will be a section called as roles path. Change the roles path folder to some other thing so that whenever you try to install galaxies, all the roles will be downloaded to some other folder structure. So there are two ways to modify this. Okay. So I'd be writing an entry in this for Java and I would be basically I'd be changing this itself. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So let me remove this. Because I have to just run a small test before that. So that's the reason why I don't want to get into it. Could you teach Git and GitHub as uh, next session in DevOps or? Okay. So you would have Git and GitHub uh, in probably two weeks from now. After two weeks, you would start Git itself. Okay. So don't worry. Till that point, I'm just pushing and pulling. Just remember those commands. Okay. Two weeks from now, once we finish Chef, we would be starting Git itself. That's the first thing which you would start. So that's what I had. And tomorrow, let us have a practice session from 5 to 7. Rebe on the very project teams on Baskarir. Rebe on the very project teams on Runya. Lera. Runya, na? Okay. Fine.
So yeah, we started with ten. Two people are active. Two teams are active. Okay. Fortunately, one team out of it is Godavari. Yeah. And what is the other thing? Tapti, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next time, let us give mountain names. Okay. Let us see the luck. Rivers are not working out, right? So let us try to give mountain names. Yeah. Fine. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. So that's what I had for the day. And tomorrow, let us meet out of practice session. And please don't install install Ansible then. I would expect you to have Ansible Visual Studio Code, all of the stuff that is required to work on Ansible. At least installations are not just grand. Rape, science, throw, e internet, lo, in the mandi, okay, sir, install this. Pray, then, yet, ye di avo do. Okay. I have your setup balls already, EC2 machines with whatever uh, nodes which you have. Yeah, fine. Thanks.